Hi, uh, it's good to be with you again. Um, we are uh, doing a little study on training the mind and the spirit. And uh, I realise that we can't easily cover this subject without having a good look at uh, Ephesians chapter 4. It's got 32 verses in it. It's not a long chapter by any standards. And I really want to encourage you to read the whole chapter because it teaches us so much about what it means to live uh, in Christ, setting aside our old habits and our, and our old flawed thinking. I'm just going to read three verses today and we're going to have a, a close look at a very small part of these three. So uh, chapter 4 of Ephesians, first three verses. And this is from the Passion Translation. Paul writes, So then I, the prisoner in the Lord, urge you to behave yourselves in a way that is worthy of the calling with which you were called. I urge you to behave with all humility and gentleness and patience. As I say, I want us to look at just one very small part of the fact. In fact, it's just one word we're going to look at. Because if we're genuinely trying to train our minds and our spirits, we need to start with the very essence of who we are. Paul placed a very high value on humility. The Greeks, and I think probably to an extent still us now, considered humility as, uh, as something that was negative. It was seen as cowering or cringing. It was something um, servile or ignoble, um, not a quality that people would seek after. It was really Christianity that turned that around and uh, started to see it as a quality that was valuable or even laudable in us. See, the thing is that humility comes from a place of knowing ourselves well and understanding our own inability to reach the standards that Jesus lived by on our own, by our own effort. Facing ourselves and who we really are and what we really are is one of the most humbling things that we can do. It makes us aware of our own unworthiness and our propensity to magnify ourselves into something that we're not, something bigger than we really are. And many of us do that. You know, we, we build ourselves up in our own minds to be more. It's a pride thing. It's fueled often now by the notion that in order to achieve anything in life, we have to believe in ourselves. And all of the Bible teaches us that we don't need to do that. We need to believe in Jesus. So Paul teaches us the opposite in chapter 4. He says, you don't need to do that. In fact, that's the wrong thing to do. What we need to do is recognise that without Jesus, we're always just a bit short of the mark. You don't know you're not the best footballer or the best chef or the best singer or the best plumber in the world unless you compare yourself to the best. It's, it's only then that you see how far short you fall. So Paul says, don't do that. Don't seek glory for the sake of having glory. Instead, seek Jesus. Put off your pride and, and your striving to be more and let Jesus have the glory instead. And I think we also need to remember that being humble isn't about being a doormat. It's just recognising that Jesus is more, has more and can do more than we ever can. So Paul encourages us to let our minds dwell on that to see that we don't need a relationship with Jesus that's fractured by our own pride. He can do more when we let him. So when, you're sense, when you sense that you're doing those things, pause, remind yourself that Jesus can do anything we can do much better. Ask for his help and pray for his blessings. Let's pray. Jesus, I pray that you come and fill each one of us today with your heavenly presence. I pray that you'd wash out of us all traces of pride, all of that sense of us needing to be more than we really are. And I pray, Lord, that you'd fill us with who you are, with your Holy Spirit, with your anointing, with your ability to see ourselves as we genuinely are. So, Lord, I ask that you'd come today. Help us to see our shortcomings and bless us as we work towards becoming more like you. I pray, Lord, in your name and for your glory. Amen. Have a great day.